Very good morning. You're watching the Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha Television, your one-stop morning show for top stories from India and across the globe. I'm Ashwara and these are the headlines. Theresa May suffers crushing defeat over Brexit deal. Parliament votes of 432 to 202 against her deal. The worst defeat in modern British history. Opposition calls for no confidence vote. Government infuses additional funds in Manrega scheme, allocates over 6,000 crore rupees to the Rural Employment Scheme after concerns over front crunch. Scheme gets an all-time high of 61,000 crore rupees. India needs a decisive Prime Minister with a clear mandate and not maverick leadership, says Finance Minister Arun Jaitley. Insists India has emerged as the fastest growing economy, aiming to break the 8% barrier under Prime Minister Modi. Centre to implement 10% uh, general category reservation for economically weaker sections from 2019-20 session. HRD Ministry announces 25% hike in uh, seats in higher educational institutions and universities. And Supreme Court comes down strongly on Meghalaya government over illegal coal mining. Highlights plight of 15 miners are trapped inside an illegal coal mine in East Chantia Hill. Refuses to grant extension to transport coal already extracted for sale. The biggest story this morning, British lawmakers defeated Prime Minister Theresa May's Brexit divorce deal by a crushing margin on Tuesday. After Parliament voted 432 to 202 against her deal, the worst defeat in modern British history, opposition Labour Party leader Jeremy Corbyn promptly called a vote of no confidence in May's government. Now, more than 100 of May's own conservative lawmakers joined forces to vote down the deal. In doing so, they smashed the previous record defeat for a government, which was a 166 vote margin, which was set in 1924. The humiliating loss appeared to catastrophically undermine May's two year strategy of forcing an amicable divorce with the close ties to the EU after the 29th of March exit. And with the clock ticking down to 29th of March, the date set in law for Brexit, the UK is now ensnared in deepest political crisis in half a century as it grapples with how or even whether to exit the European Union. With the Mo May vowing to stand by her deal and Labour trying to trigger a national election, Parliament is still effectively deadlocked with no alternative proposal. Meanwhile, the European Union said that it was horrified uh, by the massive scale of the UK Parliament defeat of the Brexit deal, agreed with Theresa May, but said that there was no option to renegotiate. French President Emmanuel Macron said uh, that uh, Britain would be the first loser if it left the European Union without a deal. Every day that passes without this issue being resolved means more uncertainty, more bitterness and more rancour. The government have heard, has heard what the House has said tonight, but I ask members on all sides of the House to listen to the British people who want this issue settled and to work with the government to do just that. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The results of tonight's vote is the greatest defeat for a government since the 1920s in this House. This is a catastrophic defeat for this government. After two years of failed negotiations, the House of Commons has delivered its verdict on her Brexit deal, and that verdict is absolutely decisive. And on to the other top story, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley has reiterated that India needs a decisive Prime Minister with a clear mandate to deliver economic growth and satisfy the country's aspirations. In a blog on Tuesday, Arun Jaitley said that India has emerged as the fastest growing major economy under Narendra Modi and could possibly become the fifth largest economy in the world by the end of the next financial year. Taking a review of the progress made under the BJP government, Arun Jaitley said that India needs a strong leader, 
stable government and consistent policy decisions for ensuring continuing economic growth. Arun Jaitley also criticized the opposition's bid to form an unworkable alliance with the maverick leadership whose sole objective is to defeat the BJP in the forthcoming general elections. The government has made an additional allocation of 6,000 crore rupees to rural employment scheme Manrega. And with this, the Manrega scheme has now the total allocation of more than 61,000 crore rupees, which is the highest even in a financial year. The additional allocation comes after nearly 90 lawmakers, a civil uh, Servant, uh, civil society members, activists, leaders of farmers' movements and former bureaucrats wrote to the Prime Minister raising concerns over fund crunch. 55,000 crore rupees was allocated for the scheme in this year's budget, but on 1st of January, over 99% fund of the Manrega scheme was reportedly exhausted three May months before the end of the financial year. The HRD ministry announced that it will implement a 10% reservation for economically weaker sections of the general category from the 2019 academic session. Now, HRD ministry will also increase around 25% uh, seats in higher educational institutions and universities across the country. HRD Minister Prakash Javrekar informed that the decision was taken at a meeting with officials from the ministry, the UGC and AICTE. The reservation will be implemented from the 2019-2020 academic session itself. With the nearly 25% seats now will be added to ensure that the reservation does not disturb the existing quota for SCST and other categories. However, the modalities are being worked out and soon the exact number of seats will be announced. The operation manuals about how to implement the quota will be issued soon. The colleges and universities will also be asked to mention the quota in their prospectus as well and make infrastructural arrangements accordingly. Government has decided to implement 10% EBC quota right from this academic year 2019-2020. All the universities, 900 universities and 40,000 colleges will be, not, will be given full operational manual and OM operational mandate in uh, one week time and this will be the reservation will be available in both public and private institutes. And the HRD ministry also approved a proposal of uh, 1,241 crore rupees to extend the 7th Pay Commission recommendations to academic staff of the government and aided technical institutions. Now, this will directly benefit a total of uh, more than 29,000 teachers and other academic staff of the state government funded institutions. About 3.5 lakh teachers and other academic staff of private colleges or institutions within the purview of All India Council of Technical Education will also benefit from this approval. Prime Minister Narendra Modi was on a day-long visit to Odisha and Kerala on Tuesday. In Odisha, he inaugurated a slew of developmental projects worth over 1,500 crore rupees in education, connectivity, tourism and culture. He said that the projects will bring about development of the state. Here are all the details. Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched key developmental projects worth over 1,550 crore rupees in Odisha on Tuesday. Inaugurating the projects, Prime Minister Modi said that they would play a key role in accelerating the state's development. Prime Minister dedicated to the nation a multimodal logistics park at Jharsuguda, built at a cost of 100 crore rupees. He also laid foundation stone for a permanent building for Kendriya Vidyalaya in Sonepur. Prime Minister Modi also inaugurated passport seva kendras at Jagat Singhpur, Kendrapada, Puri, Pulbani, Baragad and Balangir. Prime Minister Modi dedicated to the nation electrification of Jharsuguda, Vizianagaram and Sambarpul Angul lines spanning 813 kilometers. He also flagged off a new train on the Balangir Bichupali route which would connect coastal Odisha with the western region of the state. He also inaugurated the doubling of Barpali-Dungripali and Balangir-Deogaon railway lines. 
ओडिशा के विकास के लिए केंद्र सरकार का अभियान निरंतर जारी है यहां साढ़े पंद्रह सौ करोड़ रुपए से अधिक की परियोजनाओं का उद्घाटन लोकार्पण या शिलान्यास किया गया है ये परियोजनाएं शिक्षा से जुड़ी हैं कनेक्टिविटी से जुड़ी हैं संस्कृति और पर्यटन से जुड़ी हुई है टारगेटिंग दिन एट पब्लिक रैली इन बालंगीर Modi said that conspiracies are being hashed from various quarters and now some of the conspirators are coming together. He said that he will rest only after ensuring punishment to those who looted public money. Jinki tijori mein gareebon se looted hua dhan jana band hua hai. Wo mujhse badla lene ki firaak mein hai. Koshish karenge lekin aapke aashirwad se ये सारे विफल होने वाले हैं ये मेरा विश्वास है साथियों आज देश में यही तो हो रहा है और इसलिए तो मोदी के खिलाफ झूठे आरोप लगाए जा रहे हैं साजिशें की जा रही है इतना ही नहीं मोदी को रास्ते से हटाने के लिए अब ये लोग Prime Minister Modi asserted that the BJP-led NDA government has been working with determination for the development of the country. He said that the centre is focusing on five streams: education, earning for the youth, medicine for the elderly, irrigation for farmers, and listening to the masses to ensure overall and balanced progress. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated the much-awaited Kollam bypass on National Highway 66 in Kerala on Tuesday. The 13-kilometer-long two-lane bypass has been built at a cost of 352 crore rupees. The bypass will cut the travel time between Alappuzha and Thiruvananthapuram districts of Kerala and will decongest the traffic situation. Dedicating the bypass to the nation, Prime Minister Modi said that only 56% of the rural habitat was connected with roads in the country when he came to power in 2014. Addressing a public rally, Prime Minister Modi slammed the opposition for trying to stall the historic Triple Talaq bill in Parliament. The NDA government has been working towards abolishing Triple Talaq. Who is opposing us on this? The Communists and the Congress. Triple Talaq is big injustice to women. Several Islamic nations have banned it. Why should India have such a practice? But driven by vote bank politics, the Congress and Communists support it. And in breakfast news, we'll take a very short break here. We'll be right back with more news. Don't go anywhere. As the British decided to move capital from Calcutta to New Delhi, the foundation of new imperial capital was laid on the hillock called Vaisena Hill. Two great British architects and fast friends, Sir Edwin Lutyens and Herbert Baker, were given the task to carve the capital. Like all great cities of India, the New Delhi, which was to rival London and Paris, was designed on the flanks of the great residential palace of its first citizen, the Rashtrapati Bhavan. Identified as an ultimate symbol of a great structure, the first sign of the building's grandeur is its placement on a high gradient. Along the gradient, two secretariat buildings, now termed North and South Block, were built, which today houses the key ministries of the Government of India. Interestingly, the two secretariat buildings were originally drafted to be below the gradient. in order to have a more grandly view of the Rashtrapati Bhavan courtyard but baker had his way in getting them at the same level the decision which turned close friends lutyens and baker into bitter colleagues
News from Karnataka now in a blow to the Congress JDS coalition in the state. Two MLAs on Tuesday withdrew support from the ruling JDS Congress coalition. In a separate identical letters, independent MLA H. Nagesh and uh, KP JP's uh, R. Shankar said that they were withdrawing uh, support uh, with immediate effect. Their decision was announced uh, shortly after the Congress and the JDS accused BJP of trying uh, to topple the Kumaraswamy government. Sankranti ka din me me badlawan chahiye sarkar me ya achcha taraf se sarkar hona chahiye isliye me kya support kia wo support ko me vidra karre aaj better governance to the public very people of Karnataka they are waiting eagerly to see that there some some change is required now. And reacting to the developments, the Chief Minister H.D. Kumaraswamy claimed that his government is stable. Over the last two days, there have been tit-for-tat allegations of attempted poaching from the Congress and the BJP camps. The Congress has said that several of its lawmakers have gone missing, while BJP has shifted its 104 lawmakers to Delhi. Now, their resignation, however, will not hurt the government, which has 118 MLAs on its side. In the 225-member assembly, the halfway mark stands at 113. Meanwhile, following the development, Congress MLAs held emergency meeting in Bangalore yesterday. Don't worry. What are all the episodes in our Kannada channels going on from last one week? I'm enjoying it. They are in touch with me. Why do you worry? The Supreme Court yesterday banned the transportation of extracted coal lying at various sites in Meghalaya. It also asked the state government to file an affidavit on what it was doing to curb illegal mining. Coming down heavily on the state, over 15 miners who have been trapped inside an illegal coal mine in East Jentia Hills for over a month. The court said that the state has failed to deal with the menace of illegal mining. The court also refused to grant additional time to the mine owners to transport the coal that had already been extracted. The National Green Tribunal had earlier imposed a blanket ban on unscientific and unsafe mining of coal in Meghalaya in 2014. On to some other news, the exports grew at the slowest pace in three months at 0.34% in December, mainly on account of global trade tensions. Now, according to Trade Ministry, the exports growth remained almost flat at $27.93 billion in December 2018, while the imports registered a decline of 2.44% to $41 billion. Declining imports have narrowed the trade deficit to 10-month low of $13.08 billion in December 2018, as against $14.2 billion in the same month previous year. The import of gold also contracted by 24.33%, to $2.56 billion in December 2018. During the month under review, several key export sectors, including engineering goods, gems and jewelry, leather, pharmaceuticals, tea and coffee, also recorded negative growth. However, cumulatively, during April to December this fiscal, the exports grew by 10.18% to $245.44 billion, and the imports uh, rose by 12.61% to $386.65 billion. The annual status of education report on primary education focusing on schooling status of children between the age group of 3 to 16 was released on Tuesday. And according to the report, one out of four children leave class eight without being able to learn basic reading skills at the national level. 56% of class eight students can't do the basic math and 27% do not know basic reading. Now, the data has worsened in the last 10 years. In 2008, 37% of class 5 students could do basic math, which has now come down to less than 28%. While 84.8% .8 students of class 8 could read class second level text in 2008, but the number has now dropped to 72.8% in 2018. 
The survey was carried out in uh, more than 17,000 villages covering uh, uh, more than 3 lakh households and more than 5 lakh children in the age group of 3 to 16 years. And first of its kind, a two-day global aviation summit with a the theme Flying for All was inaugurated in Mumbai on Tuesday. The government unveiled Vision 2040 for the aviation industry, pitching India as the aviation hub of the world. The government is also creating a roadmap for manufacturing aircrafts in India. The Global Aviation Summit was inaugurated in Mumbai on Tuesday. The government also released the Vision 2040 to chart clear strategy for India's growth in the aviation sector. India would be adding 1,000 aircraft over the next 7 to 8 years and 1 billion trips in the next 15 years. The domestic aviation in India has been growing at 20% every year since 2015 and this growth has been the highest in the world. So it's a good idea that we like to join hands with the top players and over a period of time make aircraft. When I'm saying make aircraft, the making of any product in the world has undergone a sea change. Nobody makes end-to-end -end product in one place. It's becoming part of a global value chain, global supply chain. The government will also introduce a national logistics policy shortly, which will enable the creation of several logistic hubs across India. At India's first ever Global Aviation Summit, ministries and dignitaries gathered to explore growth opportunities in passenger and cargo traffic. 800 global delegates, including 14 aviation ministers and representatives of 35 DGCAs and over 100 CEOs, are attending this mega event. The Global Aviation Summit in Mumbai assumes paramount significance because India's aviation industry is on a high growth trajectory, ushering in the era of rapid expansion. The government now plans to unveil a mission amalgamating all the policies and programs in the aviation sector so that India could be developed as a hub for catering to the needs of global aviation industry. Reporting from Mumbai, with kind of person Junaid Iqbal Khan, I'm Kruti Mishra for Rajya Sabha Television. Union Minister for Science and Technology Dr. Harshwardhan unveiled two science channels in Delhi, DD Science and India Science. While DD Science is a daily slot on science and technology on Doordarshan's national channel, India Science is a 24-hour internet-based TV channel. The two science channels are the outcome of special efforts made by the Department of Science and Technology along with Doordarshan Prasar Bharti. Department of Science and Technology along with Doordarshan on Tuesday launched two science communication initiatives, DD Science and India Science. Speaking at the launch of the free-to-air channels, Science and Technology Minister Harshwardhan said developing a scientific temperament was a critical necessity. He said the aim is to launch a 24-7 channel dedicated to science. He stressed that there was no dearth of ideas, talent and potential in the country. प्लान करके और इसके क्वालिटी और कंटेंट में कोई कॉम्प्रोमाइज ना हो इस नाते थोड़ा समय जरूर लिया है और अब इसको शुरू करने के बाद उस सपने को साकार करने के लिए हम लोग काम शुरू करेंगे कि देश में 24 घंटे का एक डेडिकेटेड साइंस चैनल हो an agreement between Vigyan Prasar, an autonomous organization under Department of Science and Technology and Doordarshan was signed on the occasion uh, we are starting with a one hour slot, but I think the intention is very clear as the Honorable Minister shared that we want to make it a 24 by 7 channel uh, and make it, you know, not just another channel, but the channel for science content. While DD Science is a one hour slot on Doordarshan National Channel, India Science is an internet based channel. science programs अपने यूथ तक अपने बच्चों तक लेकर के जाएं तो मुझे खुशी है कि आज हमने विज्ञान प्रसार के साथ ये एक शुरुआत की है These channels are the first step in creating a national science channel for India India's national broadcaster Doordarshan reaches out to more than 92% of India's population A historic step by the Doordarshan to launch two science channels in India for science communication but the move is not only to bring one hour channel in this Doodarshan, but also to bring out a full fledged channel in the future. With camera person Prashanta Arunathakur from Rajasabha TV. 
On the sporting action now, Maharashtra continues to stay on top in the ongoing Kelo India Youth Games 2019. Snehal Bongale of Maharashtra grabbed the gold in girls under 21, 87 kg weightlifting competition. Snehal claimed the top honor with after lifting uh, 160 kg total, including 68 kg in snatch and 92 kg in clean and jerk. And in boys under 2109 kg weightlifting, Tejpal Sandhu of Punjab won the gold medal. In the girls under 2100 meters air pistol event, uh, Harshada Nithave of Maharashtra claimed the gold after defeating Yuvika Tomar of Uttar Pradesh. While in the boys under 21 three position uh, rifle event, Sartat Singh of Punjab won the gold after defeating national junior champion Ashwada Pratap Singh Tomar of Madhya Pradesh. In boys under 21, 50 meters backstroke swimming, Srihari Nataraj of Karnataka won the gold medal. He claimed another goal in the 100 meters freestyle event as well. Nataraj entered the competition with seven gold medals. While in the girls under 21, 50 meters backstroke event, Mana Patel of Gujarat won the gold medal. In the boys' under-21 hockey, Odisha grabbed the gold after beating Haryana 4-2 in the final. And with 177 medals, Maharashtra is at the top of the medals tally, including 64 gold, 51 silver and 62 bronze. Delhi is at the second spot with 121 medals, while Haryana is at the third spot with 37 gold. And season's uh, first Grand Slam, the Australian Open, is underway with some uh, stars playing their matches today. Top seeded Novak Djokovic entered the second round of the Australian Open. Djokovic com comfortably beat American qualifier Mitchell Kruger 6-3, 6-2, 6-2 in the first round of the men's singles. In the women's singles, our top seed Simona Halep defeated uh, Kanepi of Estonia to move to the next round. Halle beat Kanepi 6-7, 6-4, 6-2. And in the other women's singles match, Caroline Garcia of France defeated her Austrian, uh, Australian rival, Zoe Hives, to move to the next round. And that's it in this edition of Breakfast News. Thanks so much for watching. Have a lovely day ahead.